We're live. Let's do it and let's do it live. Welcome to Blummel. Off the rails. I like off the rails with Blummel. I like I, that title. Oh, I, I do too. I don't like just Blummel. What does that even mean? You don't I, know what that I means. I agree. I like off yeah. the rails because we let things fly. Mm-hmm. God, I wish I could let some things fly that have been on my mind. Like what? Basically told the tale during the break while I was having some yogi with my almonds. Um, <clears throat> we'll get to the big news in a second. I, I just, I can't right now. I need to, I need to vent for just a second. And I'm not going to vent about what I was venting about in, um, in the green room. I'm actually going to vent about the people that listen to this show. Because you guys can't keep secrets. I could very well just vent away right now. But I know that you guys would do some investigative fucking research. And you'd fuck with people. And you'd make them feel bad. And then I feel bad. And then you'd send them clips of what was said. And that that would really hurt their feelings. And ruin their day slash life. And um, now I can't do it. Now no one can have fun. Now no one can have fun. Because I have some... Great fucking content. Great fucking content. I know. I agree. Of things that happened, but no, I have to sit here and pretend like they didn't happen. Realistically, though, I, I'm well. I know you're you're careful about what you're about to say because you don't want to give anything away. But go ahead. Uh, never mind. Yeah, I mean, like anything I say, <laughs> anything I say will give it away. Right, right. I know. I I was thinking the same thing. But um, yeah, <laughs> I <you> I, <laughs> I want to give away so much because there, there's so much rich content of of things happened, and I want to vent about them, but I can't because of you people. Because of you people, well, you'll you'll find them, you'll you'll ruin their day because you are trolls. I wish we could just have a closed circle of fun, right? Just us here, and that this show would spontaneously uh, delete itself. And that I could just let it fly, which I like. That's doing. the funny thing. Sometimes is like I'll say stuff, and like a lot of it's off the cuff, or like say it, you know, say it to be shocking, or things like that, or you know, like just the one time it's funny. Yeah. And then like, you know, Rhett or whoever will upload a video, and I'll watch him. Like, oh man, like that, that again. Like I wanted, to, like I wanted to say it once. I didn't want everyone yeah. to hear it again. <clears throat> right. Exactly. Because it's in the moment. Yeah. When it's uh, organic and we're kind of, we have a vibe going, but like stand alone. Because sometimes when you're building up to something and you throw it in there, it could be funny. But if it stands yep. alone, it's like mean. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're like, why is he being su- such a dick? What's going on? So, um, yeah, I, I I wish I could. But I I was thinking about this on the way to work this morning, um, what I was going to do. And it was kind of this moral tug of war between doing the right thing and doing the fun thing, doing the most entertaining thing. But um, sometimes when you quote, let it fly, it doesn't work out in your favor. Mm -hmm. And I really learned that lesson hard um, during the pockets incident. Yes. Where I kind of let it get away from me um, after speaking with some friends that may have riled me up. God bless them. Because they love me more than anything, and I love them right back. You know what I'm talking about. Love not you. me. Love you. No, not not him. Fuck him. But um, I really let it fly, and you know, feelings were definitely hurt. I I certainly wasn't a compassionate person that day. I didn't. I really wasn't thinking about anybody but myself, which is basically every day, but especially that day. <laughs> it's all about me. Um. So, unfortunately, we can't discuss what I want to discuss. And and I'm just telling you this because I want to punish you. Because <laughs> I want to talk about what I want to talk about. But I can't. Because it's going to, it will get back to this person. 100%. Yep. So, I can't, I can't say what I want to say. But um, just a lot of rich content is all I'll say that, that can't be said. Because I know you guys can't keep secrets. And I wish that we could. And but by what, the way, fuck Hootie, but it's not Hootie. A few people are like, "Oh, tell us." No, it's a no, no, no. It's I talk shit about Hootie all the time. Yeah, openly and freely. No, yeah. it it wasn't Hootie, um, but it was just an experience that was had somewhat recently. Um, and even <laughs> if I didn't give away names, you guys, you know, you you guys are not. 
completely are. So you'd figure it out. Yeah. You know, and and also I'd probably just tell you because mm-hmm. that's what happens usually with my stories is I try to hint at it and then I, I'm like, well, anyways, Sally said this happened. So anyways, sorry, enough about that. I just had to get that off my chest without really getting that off my chest at all. Um, There's some news that may have um, transpired over the past uh, eight minutes. Did you guys see the Supreme Court made a new law? <laughs> Who's that, Lummy? Yeah, that's what he said about it. He's like, when he walked did you in? see the Supreme Court passed a new law? Yeah. Um, that's not it, what it may happened, have but... uh, overturned Roe versus Wade, which oh. I believe has been in effect. This, so breaking news, uh, the Supreme Court has overturned Roe v. Wade, which has been in effect since, what, 1973 or four, something like that. Basically, it seems that, and again, I'm not a um, I'm not a lawyer. I don't really know much about the law or the legal system, way more than most when it comes to how our government works, way more than most. But in the grand scheme of things, really not much at all. That's fair. And I believe that uh, Roe versus Wade, the rights will now go to the states. It's now federally illegal to have an abortion as of right now. Is it? And- is it federally illegal? Well, if it's not legal, what would it be? Well, no, no, no. Everything is legal until there's a law against it. So is there a law against it? Um, I don't... Because it was federally legal. Right. Now it's been overturned, so the only other option would be illegal, no? I mean, am I... Uh... I feel a little odd because I understand what you're saying. You're like, well, is it illegal or is it just not legal? Right, cause, but cause, those two things I think are the same. Because, well, no, in general, everything is legal. Like you can do anything you want until there's a law making it illegal. So, so is there a law that makes abortion illegal federally? Um, I mean, I don't know, but it became legalized. I, which I assume maybe it was illegal before. I don't know, but it was legal lies in seventy three or four. Yeah, to be honest, to be honest, and now it's been overturned. So does that now mean it's? I, it said that it was up to the states. That's what I read. No, I, and I agree. But I got to be honest. Like I've, I've never really cared much about Roe versus Wade. Like enough to really look into it. Um, I mean, I care because it's it's fucking big news. Oh no, yeah. As far as that goes, like I care. I just not not enough to like really look into it. Well, it says here, um, the Supreme Court on Friday overturned its landmark decision in Roe versus Wade that established the right to an abortion, with a ruling that marks a seismic shift in abortion law and will usher in a, a new rules limiting or banning access to the procedure in half of the states in some places immediately. Okay, so so Roe versus Wade basically said that you have an you have the right to get an abortion. I think so. But by so taking that away, that it's saying federally that there is no right to have an abortion. Right. It's not making it legal or illegal. So it's just it, it's up to the states, to I guess, to, de- to determine. Yeah. Um, and it will make it. I, I'm assuming I don't know a lot easier for some states to put some bans and limitations in place because they're working with the law versus against it. I, I, I don't really fucking yeah, know. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Um. So I'm expecting a bunch of fat whores with purple hair to start riding immediately. Yeah. And um, the, the ones that. <clears throat> This probably wouldn't apply to it. Anyway. Right. It is very odd. I've I've said this before, where you're like, the ones that are screaming and clamoring for abortion are usually the most unfuckable people in society. That's like, uh, for the most part, people that are like anti-guns know the least about guns at all. Yeah. Um, but it's even more bizarre that the ones that are like, I want to get fucked and kill it. Right are the least fuckable women and men of society. Right. Now, I understand what they're fighting for. You know, it's rights to your body. Okay. Okay. I I get it. And I was telling Rhett this during the break. I could never even imagine. Even if they, like, took away my right to, like, eat yogurt, like, I would never, like, buy a poster board, Mm -hmm. make a sign, and then, like, Go to a place and like stay there all day. Like I would never, fu- I would never fucking do that for anything. So I've held ever. I've held signs on the street <laughs> corner for political offices. Yeah, no, I'll never. Mostly do that Bubba. Okay. Um, when he was running for sheriff, when he was paying you. Okay. No, I w- if I wasn't getting paid. He at wasn't all. getting paid. Okay, sorry. Um, it was kind of fun, and it like 
Hmm. And then I've I've been to a couple of like protests against let's just call it um, Scientology. Okay, but that's like a local yeah, it was kind thing. Of, like, it's and affecting it was like, you, and... and like I did it like somewhat for the comedy of it because like I'm like this sometimes is... you just want to go to check things out. Yeah, and that's I get that. Like was. I know of a bunch of people who. Um, went to the Black Lives Matter protest because they were literally outside of their home. They like Whoa. looked outside and they're like, oh, what, what's this? And they kind of go and they they go, but just to kind of see what it's all about. Yeah. And especially during the pandemic when you, you couldn't go to work, mm-hmm. you had a lot of free time. You're like, all right, well, I'll just go along with this ride. And then they're like, fuck the police. And you're like, oh, shit, I got to yeah. I gotta go home. I didn't, right, I right. didn't know what this was about. My bad. So... Um, yeah, I, I'm I'm assuming that there's going to be a, a, a big a big backlash um, with this overturning of Roe versus Wade. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, like much like Blitz, I just it, it's one of those things where it's a very important issue. It, it concerns yeah. life and death, but also I don't fucking care. I don't know what and to tell how, you. That's how I feel. Like I. I don't it matters, care. And it matters enough where, like, I care about it that it matters, yeah. but, like, not enough to, like, really look into, like, word for word, like, what does it mean legally and all this right. other, Right. Like, I, I don't minutia. care enough about women's bodies. I don't care enough about uh, God and the rights of a fetus to live. I I don't care. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, when people ask you how you feel about abortion, typically the response is um, not who fucking cares, but that's... That's my response. Yeah. You know, um, for those that are afraid to, um, you know, that the government is infringing on their rights. uh, And this is not good advice. Obviously, I'm all about liberty and stuff. But like maybe just maybe try to be like a little bit like more careful. I don't know. Maybe maybe that's a good thing. I think it's fair to say. And I heard Jordan Peterson talking about this. He goes, you know, abortion is a very contentious um, issue, obviously. But he said, I think something that both sides can agree on is it's not it's not something fun. It's not something that you want to do on a Sunday afternoon with some friends. Mm -hmm. No one's excited to get an abortion. Both sides are, you know, think it's not a a, a fun thing to endure. But one thinks it's your right and the other thinks it's not. So I understand that. But. Honestly, I just, um, I don't care. And like I said, even if it was something that was affecting me, and you'd think that I would care, like, as a woman and this and that, but it's like, I don't know. And for those that are afraid, where there's a will, there's a way. If mm-hmm. you if you get pregnant, you know, try troubleshooting and problem solving, and there's stairs, and, you know, I, I know the joke's been made before, and it's kind of hack, but, like, you can't abort Ball of stairs, you know, whatever. You'll yeah. figure it out. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of resources where, you know, you can find this, find that. But also, do you think that this is, would be a deterrent in people having unprotected or, I don't even want to say unprotected because sometimes you're protected and shit happens. You get pregnant anyways. But do you think that this law or overturning this law would would motivate people to be more careful or no? Because I think no. No, it's not going to change that. It wouldn't make you think, well, now that Roe versus, now that I don't have abortion in my back pocket, I'm going to be a little bit more careful when I have sex. I don't think that Mm. that's going to do anything. Yeah, not really. So, I guess maybe, um, uh, I don't know, maybe like if you're in a state that does make it illegal, like you might second guess it, but it's not going to really, you're not going to change anything. Yeah, probably not. So, um, it might like it actually, it might make more women get on the pill, like the ones that were on the fence about it. Like, especially if they live in a state that's now it makes it illegal, they're like, okay, well, I was kind of on the fence. Now I will get on the pill. I know that's not like, you know, uh, fail safe, but like, Mm -hmm. uh, that or like, hey, I'm going to make you wear a condom, you know, the first few times when I wasn't normally going to, like, you know, that kind of thing. It's not going to change. I would like to get. The breakdown, not so much of race when it comes to people getting abortions, but age. Like, is it mostly really young people or is is a lot of it just, I bet a lot of it is driven by probably the most uh, in, uh, important variable is socioeconomic status, right? You can't afford a kid. Now you, now you have another, a third one. You can't yeah. afford it. You want to have an abortion. 
maybe a lot of teenagers are getting them because obviously they can't afford it and mom and dad don't know and they're going to be disgraced by the I family. Know, I know a lot of people bring up the like, you know, hey, uncle raped me or like you're up, you know, like I mean, a baby was a product. Rape. But how much like such I'm, outliers. That's what I'm saying. Like numbers wise, I'm sure that's just like a tiny, it, tiny right. percentage. It really is. It's like, well, what about rape? It's like, OK, but that's like that's a fringe and by the situation. Way, I agree with them. What? I mean, like. There should be exceptions for that. Like, I mean, I'm, 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 well, like, here's I'm the pro thing. rape anyway, but I, I mean, rape, it's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I am, I am pro rape as well. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> yeah, pro abortion. I got plans this weekend, but I uh, can't hang out. Um, but what people would say and what the argument that I would make and do make, because I, in theory, I'm pro life, I guess. But just in theory, like, I don't care. But if you were to press me on the issue, I'd go, yeah, well, yeah, I think it's probably wrong to kill a fetus. So, uh, yeah, it's weird. I'm, I'm, I'm pro-life, but I'm also pro, like, you should be able to do what you want. Yeah. Kind of. So it's like, uh... it's one of those things where it's everyone benefits but the fetus. Like, society benefits from abortion, not having all these fucking kids yeah. and, you know, the families. You stress the family out, the mother out, the father out, the grandparents out. Everybody gets stressed and is fucked but the fetus. Mm-hmm. Who probably grows up to be a criminal, anyways? Not saying, but you know, probably. Yeah. <clears throat> and what was I going to say before about? Um, I don't know, but it's uh, it's interesting what is going on right now. I'm a little bit concerned. I'm like, are people going to take to the streets like they did two years ago during the George Floyd thing? I I don't know. I don't know. Oh, mm. this is what I was going to say <clears throat> about the the outlier cases. Okay, yeah. So what people would say in that regard is okay. At the end of the day, like, even if you were raped, which was something horrible, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you're punishing the fetus. You know, if you were right. raped and you got pregnant and then the man who did it goes to jail, that would make more sense. But if you're raped and something horrible happened, and this is what they would say or I would say, you know, something horrible happened. Now you're pregnant with this guy's kid is the right thing to do to punish the fetus for, you know, being conceived like that. Right. I got you. You know, you're punishing the wrong thing. But, I, you know. Mm hmm. I think everybody could agree that if the mother's life is in danger, then that should trump the fetuses. Because if the mom isn't likely to survive, probably neither is the fetus. Sure. And also you have a a, a person who's here and established and has a life versus the, the, the fetus. So if that is, you know, complicating the mother's health, then I think that it should be okay to to abort. And then I saw something in Drudge. I didn't read it or anything, but I did see a headline about like, what if you, what if it's like a, I mean, I guess this is a different procedure, but if you had like a stillborn or something and, you know, can you remove it? Is it the removing process? It'd probably be a different procedure then. Yeah. Because you're not kill. Because first you got to, like Dan was saying, you got to kill the fetus and then you got to remove it. Mm -hmm. So I, I just want part two, please. It's already dead. Thank you very much. So I don't know. Um, it should just be interesting. It's it's one of those things that's like such a hot button issue, but we just don't care. We don't care. Mm-hmm. When you, and, and and again, it's one of those things where like this is the one issue where, if you were to ask me what I think is right and wrong, I'd say abortion is probably wrong on the books. But if I got pregnant, I would have one if I could. I yeah. would do it probably. Um. Kids are a big topic of discussion with uh, women my age because this is usually when they start uh, wrapping shit up. Mm-hmm. Thirty five. I understand. You know, I look young and um, vivacious and virile and just extremely youthful, but that's the Botox. Um, these eggs are old. They're they're aging aggressively, and um, especially at thirty five. Like thirty five was a little bit hard to swallow because you're just like, oh, that's the age where it's like, you're in a new. Br- I'm in a new bracket now where it's like women over, you know, thirty five and older. Mm-hmm. You're gonna have multiple chromosomes with the and complications and the things and the spina bifida. So it's um. A topic that me and my friends talk about, and uh, I have a friend who had a birthday recently. Okay. So I gave her a call to see how she's doing. It's it's strange. With this person, Some sometimes it's like we're talking multiple times a week. I've known her my whole life. Mm-hmm. So sometimes we're talking multiple times a week, and then other times we won't talk for a year, maybe two. 
Um, so it's very strange. Uh, the is it the Evans and flows? Yes. Ev- Evans, Evans and flows. Yeah, the Evans and the flows is. Yeah, of this relationship. But at the end of the day, we can pick up the phone, call each other, and when we connect, it, it's like we didn't skip a beat. So I called her uh, on her birthday, which is summer solstice, and we've known each other since we were three or four. So, you know, I'm really good with birthdays, but hers is especially etched in my mind, and mine is etched in her mind, even though she's not great with birthdays. She always remembers mine. I always remember hers. So I called her, and we caught up a little bit, and um, this is the person that was dating the guy who uh, want, who is aspiring to live in his van, in a van. Nice. He's got goals. He's got goals that he hasn't accomplished yet, which is living out of his car. So if only he could, um, you know, glow up and accomplish his goals of living in a car, we would all just be so proud. So I talked to her, and this person especially is like the Michael Jordan of, of justification, when it comes to bad ideas and decisions. I mean, it is just impressive when you start asking questions and you let just someone start talking and you are just allowing them to go through the mental gymnastics that they go through every day to make it seem like everything's okay when it is not. You are just like, wow. I don't know how we got from A to B and how you convinced yourself that this is a good idea, but fucking bravo. Mm -hmm. So... I asked her about said uh, boyfriend, <clears throat> and she told me she has not yet introduced him to the family. Now, she lives with her family, so it's not like the family is in, um, you know, a state across the country. It's not like she's in California and her family is in Connecticut. She lives with her family, and she's been dating a man who lives seven minutes from her family and her. And she just hasn't found the right time to introduce this boyfriend whom she's had for nine months Mm. and um, just has decided, you know what? It's just not, not, we're not there yet. I'm like, what do you mean you're not there yet? You've been dating for nine months. Are you exclusive? Yes. And you're his, you're his girlfriend. He's your boyfriend. Yes. But you're not going to introduce him to your family. No. She's like, well, I've just, you know, I've introduced people to my family before and it just didn't end well. I'm like, we are making some crazy correlations between, you know, I'm like, maybe you were dating a loser and the family met the loser and said, this guy's a loser. And then you realize he was a loser and you broke up, which is what happened with her ex-boyfriend. Who wasn't a loser, by the way. He okay. wasn't a loser. He just wasn't a doctor or a lawyer yeah, or yeah. an ex- or a uh, not expensive um, a rich businessman. Mm-hmm. And he also was maybe the I'm not trying to throw shade. White people aren't the aren't the only people that can be racist. But I think that he may have been the wrong color. I'll just say that. I'll just say he was maybe not the right color. Again, these people aren't white. They don't identify as white, but they were not happy with maybe the. Um, he was there. There, well, I'll just say they're, they're Middle Eastern, and her ex boyfriend was, I believe, he was Mexican. <clears throat> and I think there was uh, some problem there, even though everyone is tan and brown. Yeah, that's um, it was the wrong kind of brown for them, I think. So I think that had something to do with it. But I think that they could have overlooked that if he was like smarter, more ambitious, and made more money. I think that's really where they uh, they don't care what color he is as long as he's a doctor lawyer combination they're they're happy with that. So um, I'm talking to my friend. So not so she was dating a guy who the family wasn't thrilled with back in like 2018, 17, 18, and um, this guy who she's dating now is even a bigger loser than that guy by a magnitude of ten. Yes. Now, the ex-boyfriend, maybe you recall the story. He didn't know where Washington, D.C. was. He didn't know where Washington, D.C. was. And he was in the military. He thought Washington, D.C. was in Washington State. Um, is it not? It's not. No, it's not. Is and, it in Columbia? Because uh, it is a district of it. it yes, uh, right. But it's um, it's on the other side of the country. So when I found out and she found out that this man did not know where 
Washington, D.C., was I encouraged her to break up with him. <laughs> because my my theory was, if he doesn't know this, what else doesn't he know? Mm-hmm. That's a vast vat of, of knowledge that he is just never tapped into. He just doesn't know. So that's that's scary when people don't know that. And I know I've mentioned this before, but I had a friend who, uh, a male friend from high school who was dating a woman that didn't know that her pee hole and her vagina hole were separate holes. She thought it was just like, she just thought she had a cloaca or something. Okay. Just like a, a multi-purpose hole. And when he tried to explain to her her own anatomy, she wasn't happy about it. And I told him, I said, Matthew, you have to break up with this girl. She, she doesn't know she has more than one hole down there. He goes, I know. And he did. This was about, I don't know, 12, 13 I mean, years he, ago. Yeah. But I think he was already on his way out, and that was just the kicker. He could show her there's another hole. Yes. Third input, I believe they call that. Yes, yes. Um, but she thought that she just gave birth out of her urethra or that <laughs> urine just fell out of her pussy. I don't know. But um, And she wasn't, you know, uh, three. She was a grown woman. She was in her early 20s, mm-hmm. and she just thought that she had a multi-purpose um, piss vagina hole. And when he explained that to her, you know, it's one of those things where she's like, don't tell me about my body. He's like, okay, but whatever, bitch, stupid idiot. So back to my friend, I I give her a call and I ask her how her relationship's doing. She's like, great. She said, great. I haven't seen him in a week. What? Said, great. Um, We've just been busy. Okay, great. Uh, She tells me my cousin's getting married this weekend. I think today is the wedding or tomorrow. And she said, um, I said, well, is your boyfriend going to be in attendance? Because that's usually what you do when you're in a relationship is you bring your partner stuff. It's right by where they live, right? I, it, walking distance, actually. So then he will absolutely be there, right? No, he will not. Um, and not because he couldn't attend. It's because he wasn't invited. So I said to my friend, what do you, my friend, Beth, I'm talking to Beth, whose boyfriend's name is Kyle. And I said to Beth, um, you're not going to bring Kyle to the wedding? She said, no. I said, well, why not? I mean, you've been dating Kyle for nine months. What's going on? And then the mental gymnastics, that's when that starts to set Mm -hmm. in. Well, it's really about my cousin. I don't want it to be about me and everybody like asking him questions about, you know, his goals of living in a car. Van. Van. Um, And she said that I mean, it got to the point where even her aunt, the mother of the bride, said, you can bring your boyfriend. Like, it was it. She was like, please bring him. We yeah, want to meet yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my friend said, no. Um, and there were mm. hints of, like, uh, you know, my fr- family's very critical. It's like, yeah, you're dating a fucking loser, and your parents are going to step in and go, what the fuck? Yeah, giant red flag if you're like afraid to bring your other your spouse, partner, right. boyfriend, girlfriend around the family. Like right. at first, I get like you need to like make sure it's okay, but then eventually, like nine months. Yeah, right. That's crazy. Right? No, I know it's horrible, especially yeah. since they live in the same town. Yeah. Yes. So th- now I've learned that his family was also in town, and and she like didn't want to get involved. She's like purposely distancing herself. So, you know, usually at this point in the conversation, when I'm talking to someone who's trying to justify something that they're doing or not doing, I don't give my opinion. I just start asking questions that make them say things out loud. Mm -hmm. And then they start putting, they're like, okay, that's happened to me multiple times, even with you, actually. I won't say about what, but, you know, we start talking about something and you start saying it out loud and you're like, this is ridiculous. So, yeah. yeah. yeah, So, I mean, that's happened multiple times because I like to call it like I see it without calling it like I see it. And let people just come to their own conclusions. Um, I, f- I feel like I've been, uh, not necessarily with you or anything, but like I feel like I've been the catalyst for many breakups that should have happened years prior. Where I've had conversations with friends, very close friends. Mm-hmm. Um, I almost gave away a clue, but I didn't because I'm learning. I'm learning. Um, I say things like, oh, you know, what's their plans, this, that. And then one time... A friend of mine said, oh, my God, so-and-so is a loser. Mm-hmm. And I go, yeah, I, I don't know. But I'm not tell. I, I don't get involved with people's business unless they ask for my opinion. I'll never step in someone's relationship unless, you know, they're getting hit or something, well, yeah, which I've different. never yeah. 
been a part of something like that where I'm like, oh, my God, I think so-and-so is being abused. But, yeah, where you just kind of let people start talking and, you know, kind of like with with my buddy who I told you about who was leading this girl on and, you know, wanting to be in a relationship but without committing to her. And I'm like, you got to break up with this chick because you're wasting her time. She's 30 years old. I think she was from, like, Indiana, actually, or something. Some fucking cornfield. Yeah, bullshit town. Sorry, Bubs. Um, and she just wanted to get married and like have a family. And my friend was just like dicking around with her. And I'm like, dude, fuck you, dude. Mm -hmm. Break up with her or like live with her. Pick one. Yeah. So we broke up with her. And then two years later, he got back together and now they're living together. I'm like, okay, well, you did. You did what I asked. You picked one. You picked both actually just at different times. Cool. So yeah. So I was, I was chatting with my friend and, um, I go, hey, listen, I'm not trying to be a dick, but it sounds like, um, it sounds like you're not really sold on this guy. She goes, I'm not. Like, she was at least honest. I'm not. You you said this was the other day you said this? Yeah. Oh, okay. I go, it it sounds like you guys aren't serious or like you're, you're planning on this being somewhat short term. And she said, yeah. And she Hmm. was at least honest about that. Okay. Mm -hmm. But she is in a conundrum that I think a lot of. People, and I'm going to say women because women just have more of a shelf life when it comes to like biology and reproduction. Oh, yeah. They hit an age and it's just downhill. Uh, trust me, I know. About so, 34, apparently. Mm, yeah, great. So, um, <laughs> fuck you. So I say, like, uh, she goes, when we're together, everything's awesome. We have such a great time together. But whenever we. Ha- start discussion- discussing the future, she goes, it's just fucking terrifying. Because I think he's, um, I think he works at a plant nursery. What's and he does gardening and he wants to live out of a van and he lives with six roommates. Well, and I think he's around my age, thirty, maybe a little younger, 32 or something. And uh, my friend is... She is attracted to him because he's an attractive guy. I've seen him. Mm -hmm. But he's uh, got a little Peter Pan syndrome, and it sounds like he doesn't have a plan or knows what he wants to do and hasn't figured anything out. And my friend, despite the fact that she's living in the, trying to live in the present, that's what, isn't that the new age thing? Live in the present, which is true. You should. But also, that doesn't mean you discount the future because at some point, the present, the future becomes the present. And then what are you going to do? Just be like, oh, you know, she's like, well, maybe. And then here's where the justifications came in. Well, maybe I should just live a more spontaneous life and not worry about the future. I'm like, okay, fine, but that's not you. Mm -hmm. I've known you since we were in diapers, and that ain't you, bitch. And she's like, I know. You know, she knows that's not her. I go, you're way... She used to come from... You know how, like... Dan is like image wise and mm-hmm. that's kind of like the Persian flex okay. in San Diego. Okay. With the designer clothes and the Audis, the BMWs, the nice cars, the fan you I mean, I don't I didn't watch the show, but like the Shaws of Sunset or whatever was like a a good representation of like what it's like to be Persian and rich in Southern California. Now, not saying that my friend was at that level, but she's in the atmosphere of that sort of lifestyle where she's used to very nice things and she's used to be, um, you know, wined and dined, um, you know, lives very close with the family, lives with her family. So that's just kind of how it's it's done over there. So for her to come from that world where image is everything to dating a guy who wants to, who is, who hasn't even accomplished living in a van. So put that in perspective. He wants to live in a van, but hasn't gotten around to it yet. He's, it's still on his bucket list, on his to do mm. list, is living out of his car. So when you try to put those two worlds together, it's not that anyone is right or wrong. It's just they're not compatible. And her family is going to fucking flip their shit when they realize what she's been doing for the last nine months. So. It's just an interesting uh, tale. And my friend is, you know, she's been unemployed for four years. Can I say that? Uh, she's if it's been, true, you can, well, you can say whatever you want. She's, she, true, she's been unemployed for four years. and um, She's obviously she, looking for a job every day, though, right? No. Uh, she told me she's never going to work ever again. And I go, wow. Now, this is 
where my own ideas and way of living are challenged in a way that make me angry and make me kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like I start being like preachy against her, but then I realize I'm just jealous. So I'm like, when she first told me this, you know, within the last few years, she told me she's never going to get a job again. She never wants to be in the workforce again. Mm -hmm. I go, you, you can't, you can't opt out of that. And you're not even trying to marry rich. Like you're doing a shit job. Right. That's a difference. You're not saying I want to be a wife and a mother and I don't want to work fine, but you're just telling me you don't want to work. You want to live at home your whole life and you don't, you know, you're not even like looking for a guy actively. This was probably like a year and a half ago. I was fucking angry. I was like, you can't, you can't do that. Like, that's not the rules. But then I realized I had been so ingrained, you know, socially in my head, you know, through just living and being a person of society that you have to grow up. That you have to move out, that you have to get a job, that you have to be able to support yourself, especially if you're not like actively looking for a husband or having a child or something like you have to be an adult about stuff. And she's like, no, no, you don't. And I was so angry. But then I realized like I was also a little bit jealous, mm-hmm. a little jealous, as they say, because she's in a very unique situation where her family has fucking money. And they're also, I'll just say they're Persian. So the culture, and we talked about this uh, on Wednesday when I called her, the culture is very much like the the kids stay at home, like for yeah. extended periods of time. Yeah, yeah. You've probably noticed that with uh, like more ethnic um, subcultures within America that like maybe it's... It's becoming more common here Yes, too. yes, yeah. I, I think it's common with like Middle Eastern families I don't. I don't know about uh, Italian families, but mm, not so much not. Asian, Asian family. Yes, yeah. Yes, okay. Yes. So like, where the, the the kids, even though they're adults, they still live with parents until maybe they get married and break off and do their own thing. But my friend, and then usually the parents and grandparents come to live with them. Correct. Exactly. That's exactly what happened with her family. Yeah, that's usually what happens. Yeah. So they, you know, went to college finally and moved out, and then the parents came from T- Tehran, from Iran, and they moved in and they lived together and they lived together for twenty years, mm-hmm. and then the grandparents left, and then the adult child moves back in, and it's very overlapping. Yes. So I understand that that's kind of a cultural thing. But that doesn't mean that I wasn't angry about it. I'm like, I understand my dad would take me in or, you know, uh, I don't know about my, not my mom, but whatever. She has a different situation. But my dad would take me in if I needed oh, a place. Oh, he would love that. And my mom would too if I, like, needed oh, a place needed to stay. It, yeah. Um, Your dad would absolutely love that. My dad would. <laughs> but I we I think he would regret it because we're, we're too similar. We, we'd fucking kill each other. Yeah. Um. So I... When my friend first told me that she's like never going to enter the workforce again, I'm like, well, you can't do that. She's like, why not? Um, I'm like, because you fucking can't. Like, I was like, there was like no reason. Yeah. I was like, because. That's cause, how, cause that, that's how things. That's how I've taught. Been right. Le- learned it, it, it. When someone starts questioning like the fabric of reality, yeah. you like spin yourself out when they're like, well, why do I have to work? Like my family's rich. Cu- and you're like, you cu- can't. Cu- Cause. Cause you can't yeah. do it. Yeah, cause. Cause you can't, right. fucker. Like, that was my response. Yeah. And then when you start realizing you don't have a legitimate reason for your answer, then you have to turn it back on yourself and go, whoa, like, I'm just mad that, like, I can't do that. Yeah, or I, mean, I never like, had the ability. If not I could ability, pay all but... my bills and have money to do whatever I wanted to and not have to work, I would, that's what I would do. Yeah. And she's telling me her day-to-day life, because I'll often ask her, I'm like, Take me through your day to day life, like of not having a job and not having to worry. Now that doesn't. She did buy like a property, so she get has like passive income because she's Airbnb it out. Yeah, but that's not a job. That's so, you no, set something up and you get passive income. Great, but that's yeah. not a job. No, it's an investment. And sure, it per, you know p- pays bills, but it's not a job. Right. So everything is taken care of as far as like she doesn't have to pay rent. Um, she doesn't have to pay for food. She doesn't have to pay for utilities. I imagine, I think her car may be paid off. Like, I, she maybe has, like, her cell phone bill, and that's it. Mm. And I don't even know if she pays for that. Like, I don't know. Right. It's probably on her mom's plan. Right. Exactly. So I don't know what her setup is. So she walks me through her day, and it's like she does rock climbing. In the, she's like a housewife with no house, and she's not right. a wife. But that's awesome. Like, she wakes up, she's like, oh, I went rock climbing today at the rock climbing thing. And then she does, uh, she's into this... Uh, You've probably seen it, but it's called silks. So it's like 
think of like a tightrope, but they're like silks oh, that yeah. you do all those things upside yeah, down yeah, yeah. with the the flips and yeah. the twirls, mm-hmm. which is so her like when she told me she was doing that, oh, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, of course. So she does that. She'll go to the gym. Like she's just like, I then I make lunch and then I do. So she just lives this housewife life, but she doesn't have own a house and she's not a wife and has no kids. And when you hear this life, you're like, that sounds fucking great. Mm-hmm. But it also infuriates you because you can't do that. But I also wouldn't be happy doing that. So it's this weird thing where it's like, I wouldn't want that, but I'm mad that she's okay with it. Mm-hmm. Because she is, she's defined the rules of society as an adult. Like, you're not supposed to, that's, you should feel shame. Shame on you. You should feel shame for doing that. But she doesn't and she doesn't care. And then I'm angry at her for not feeling shame. But in reality, I'm just jealous, I guess. Yeah. So now I've kind of just accepted that she's just not. I think also. It'd be different if like she's like, look, I'm not going to get a job. You're like, how are you going to pay your bills? She's like, I have no idea. But like her bills are getting paid. I mean, she doesn't really have any, but yeah. But, but they are. I mean, like. Yeah, her room and board. And yeah. I mean, yeah. So it's, <laughs> I mean, that makes it somewhat okay. And not only that, it's not like her mom is trying to get her to leave. Her mom wants her to stay. Because. Mm-hmm. Her mom lives in this big home by herself, and if my friend left, she'd be in that big house by herself. She wants her daughter to stay with her. Right, right. So the mom benefits, and the mom can afford it because she has to pay for the house anyways. It's not yeah. like my friend leaves and then she has to pay less. and you know She has to pay for utilities and maybe a little more if my friend's there taking showers, whatever, but so. who cares? Her mom's fucking rich. Her mom is the badass. Like she's <laughs> like It's crazy, and I've no- I noticed this when I went to Australia- and my dad's generation, my dad's, uh, the, the, my, when I, I got introduced to some people and um, their parents, that generation, were extremely successful business people. Like, and they were living in mansions in Sydney, which is one of the most expensive cities in the fucking world. Mm-hmm. And what I noticed is that my generation were wildly unsuccessful and unmotivated to do anything because mom and dad just fucking took care of it all. Yeah. And so, you know, you're seeing a, there was a lot of cohabitating with, you know, adult children and, and parents. When I was there, a lot of guys between the ages of, you know, 24 and 30 that were living at home. And to me, I was baffled by that because that's pretty uncommon in the United States. You know, maybe more so in, like, you know, during COVID or something. But before that, yeah. it was like, what the fuck? Why are you still living at home and you're 28? That's insane. But it was pretty common in, like, that Jewish community. So it's the same sort of thing where it's like mom and dad can pay for everything, so I'm just going to do whatever I want to do, and that includes not going to work or having a job ever again. So, you know, it, it kind of questioned a lot of the things that I thought about, you know, how things ought to work. But, fuck, if everybody is happy and, you know, her mom's happy, she's happy, like, who fucking cares? Mm-hmm. So I had to come to those terms, which wasn't wasn't nice, but... What what that what when you come from that sort of environment and you don't have a job, and you don't need to have a job and no one cares if you have a job or whatever. You are completely detached from reality and how normal people live their lives. Like my friend said, oh, my God, I got so angry with her. It was during the pandemic um, and they were shutting down businesses. And she's like, well, that's the risk you run when you open a business. Sometimes it just fails. I'm like, yeah, but it didn't fail. The government shut them down. She yeah. goes, well, there's risks in everything. And I'm like how do you have no sympathy for these people that are losing their businesses of 30, 40, 50 years and now have nothing because they can't operate because the government shut them down? It wasn't that they gave bad service or made bad products or anything or had bad customer service or whatever. It's because the government shut them down. She's like, whatever, that's the risk you run. Like, she's so de- uh, detached. That's like, that's like the company Jewel now. Like, they're being forced to stop. Like, Ridiculous. I hate the product. It's horrible. It's a bad product. Like, t- to me, it's a bad product. But, like... People like it, and they know the risks, and, like, the government's just going to come in and say, oh, you know what, this giant company, yeah, you can't do what you've been doing. Yeah, not not having FDA approval, I mean, that, that means it's off the market, and yeah, they can't they sell. To. Where are they yeah. going to go? I mean, that's horrendous. And to be honest with you, if you've ever had the menthol jewels, like, I kind of get it. <laughs> it's fucked up. I don't like smoking either, uh, and I, I hate cigarettes and stuff. Obviously, that's not a cigarette, but I... I kind of get it. I have a very close friend who had a jewel like attached to her hip, and I was like, "That's gross." Um, she's like, "You want to hit it?" And I'm like, "All right." Then I took a hit, and I'm like, 
okay, it's kind of nice when you pair it with drinking yeah, or and, when you pair it with drugs. And it's they, really up nice. Up until recently, they had like a whole bunch of different flavors and stuff. They don't have. They, yeah. they took those off the market a little yeah. while ago. But. Yeah, it's it's really I fucking get it why people like it. Sure, um, oh, not I all the totally time, get it. but it, honestly, when I the last time I did Molly. Um, my friend was like, hit this. And it was like, it was just a jewel. It was just, um, mm-hmm. yeah, it wasn't weed or anything. And it was just like menthol and like the the cool, t- oh my God, it just makes your trip like so much better. So I'm like, oh, it's the best, love this. Well, so, I, w- I wonder if they make menthol vapes without nicotine. Because so they, like, they have a bunch of vapes you can buy that have no nicotine in them. Yeah, but it sounds like they're canceling jewels altogether, are yeah, they? Yeah, they are. But yeah. there's there's hundreds of companies that make Va- different types of vapes. Without, yeah, and you'd think they'd be able to get around that and just say, okay, fine, we have jewels with or, no nicotine. Or people like uh, like Cretan Travis, you know, he's got that big ass fucking giant box that he carries around. Uh huh. You know, he takes the top off and puts the liquid in. Like a lot of guys do that. They don't have the cartridges, they just reload. Mm. So, you know, Jewel doesn't offer that, but they, like those are still legal. Right. And it's not like there. there's plenty of different other, yeah, vapes or yeah. vaping companies that are. You know, fair game, but mm-hmm. it seems like this is the most successful one, so they're targeting them, like because they're they have the most problem with kids, I guess, because they're the probably the most affordable. I'm ge- I'm guessing. People in chat say they do offer uh, nicotine less menthol vapes. Okay, well maybe I'll stock up on those because yeah. they're, they're fucking awesome. But anyways, <laughs> um, yeah, that's absolutely ridiculous. But uh, going back to my friend, um. It, I really feel like I was the one that learned the lesson that hmm. like, you know, how long did it take you to figure that out, though? Um, I think not very long. I, I was angry for when she first told me her plan that she was never going to enter the workforce again. I'm like, that's just not an option. Like, you can't do that. I think I was also really mad because she spent so many years getting a higher education. Right. And which is stupid because so did I. And I'm telling dick jokes. But at least I'm doing something, <laughs> you know? At least I did something. My parents are like, you know, borderline proud of me. But I, I just, I was like, dude, you got like a biochem degree and and a master's in biochem, and you're, you, you know, dedicated all this time. She hates it. I get it. But it's like, why did we work so hard in high school? And why did we work so hard in undergrad? Why did we work so hard? I mean, I didn't finish my master's, but in her master's, to you know, get this degree, and then you literally did nothing. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm all about going in a different direction and stuff, but go in a direction. And I even co- was like trying to goad her uh, yesterday or the day before when I called her. I'm like, but you, you do want to move out of your mom's house at some point, right? You you do want to do that. She's like, yeah, but there's always an excuse, mm-hmm. you know. And, and it's like now these excuses are actually more and more legitimate. You know, at first it was. It, you know, uh, COVID, and then it was uh, the housing market and gas and this and all this sort of shit. So it's just like, all right, but there's always going to be an excuse. There always will be an excuse. And then you're going to be 50 living with your mom. And maybe, fuck, maybe that's what you want. Maybe that's your goal. I don't, I don't know. But I just feel like that that sort of lifestyle would not make me happy at all. Because if I'm not getting, like, challenged... If I'm not like kind of forced to do some stuff and just kind of have to grind through it, that is really character building, you know, challenging yourself or working with a team, like all those things help you become a a person that's well integrated in society. If you learn how to connect with people, but if you're just, and it doesn't help. She's also an only child. Mm -hmm. So it's like when we were kids, she didn't understand the concept of sharing. I'm like, I have to do this with my sister and she gets half and she's like, I don't get it. Yeah. And I'm like, because she's a person and my parents also love her. She's like, I'm not getting this. What do you, I don't understand. I go, we have to, it's, my parents aren't rich. Like they have, we share things. She's just like, well, that sounds disgusting, you peasants. I'm like, (laughs) all right, well, what are you going to do? So um, I I feel like a lot of that, her family is just, it's funny when you can be so supportive that it actually cripples you. Mm Mm-hmm. Her parents and her family have coddled her so much that she is literally, and I was talking to my mom about this, and she was just like, I think she's afraid to grow up. And I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah, she well, is. Yeah. She's like, have Peter Pan syndrome. Um, so, anyways, I guess we should take a break. We'll be back with more uh, Supreme Court overturns Roe v. Wade and fun adventures when we return. Yay.
Am I the weirdest person you've ever dated? Uh, yeah. Okay. I thought so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I like it. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I know you do. Uh, but, but I feel like we're pretty weird together. Yeah. And of course, like, you know, it is fun to fuck with Lamy and Bubba during the shows. You know, we'll just be talking and then suddenly we'll see, like, you know, Lummy's barefoot ass coming in and we're like, oh, it's fucking, you know. Upsetting. Yeah. And so then I'll start, like, you know, pretending to suck on on his breast or, you know, lick his ear or something weird. Right. And then he's like, oh, 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 God, oh, God. And then we'll, like, block entrance to his area. So he has to, like, walk around yeah. us. It's really awkward. And then pre- we pretend like we're doing it to make him uncomfortable. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah, yeah. It's fun. It's a good time. Uh, let's take a phone call. Hello, who's this? Hey, guys. This is Gary. How's it going? What's up, Gary? Hey, Gary. Uh, I just want to talk about Roe real quick. Uh, yeah. I know you're you're oh. a, a lawyer and a, like a marine biologist slash architect or something, so please weigh in. Well, scientist and, and, and lawyer. Yeah. But uh, Roe was based on a case that said uh, adult couples should be allowed to choose contraceptives. That was the first right to privacy case. Okay. And then the next, and then the next one was, both ought to be married, ought to be allowed to be married. That shouldn't be prohibited. Nowhere are those two issues mentioned in the Constitution. And then abortion comes up, and according to today's decision, abortion yeah. anywhere in the Constitution. Yeah, your so phone, your phone's breaking up, Gary. Your phone just got oh, recorded. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's try. I don't know what parts you got, but the rights to privacy first included the right to contraception, mm-hmm. the right to intermarriage, marriage, then the right to mar- uh, abortion, then the right to uh, same-sex marriage. Nowhere are those things mentioned in the Constitution. Today's decision says that abortion is not mentioned in the Constitution. Okay. Protected. So all those other rights okay. that I just mentioned should come down to in future cases. So this is going to be a huge thing for the Democrats to get motivated to run for the 22 uh, uh, midterm elections. Oh, I, I agree. And, I agree with that. And, and if that's the case, then uh, losing the House becomes less likely and gaining more votes in the Senate might happen. And you need 60 votes in the Senate to practically do anything. Correct. In- which isn't democracy, nor re- nor a representative government. It's just some stupid Senate rule. And if that rule uh, is met by getting 60 votes for the Democrats, the Democrats can do anything, or they can have 50-plus uh, senators now and get rid of that rule and, and start doing some stuff like a, a over-conservative Supreme Court. Come on. you Six to three reversing a, a, a unanimous decision? That's ridiculous. Yeah. So what oh, are you doing this I, week? I completely agree with you about how it's going to affect the elections coming up. I mean, I you know. Yeah. So what are you doing this weekend, Gary? Do you do anything fun ever? Are you ever happy? That's what I thought. That's a perfect response to that answer, by the way. Appreciate yeah, his, you. His phone was breaking up. 81390Bubba, um, I did kind of enjoy the blast from the past uh, down memory lane we went today of us as kids. Mm-hmm. That was funny. Um, I liked your little mullet. It was very 80s, early 90s of you. Yeah, it was It was 80s. Yeah. Um, I like talking about people's dynamics with their siblings because some people are like you look at the Diacos, for mm-hmm. example, and how close they are, not even just as children, but as adults. I mean, you know, Steve and Dan are neighbors and Jay and Steve live together and Jay and Dan live together. They work, work together, together and live like, together. So like... much overlap. And then there's families that are more like, you know, I feel like you, me and Lummies. Yeah. Or just a little bit more, uh, you know, removed. Some people aren't talking to other people. You maybe don't get along the best with your siblings or whatnot. But I feel like our relation, we're both the oldest of two. Mm-hmm. I have a sister, you have a brother. And it seems like 
I think you are much closer to your brother than I am with my sister. I think so. <clears throat> but kind of have like a similar, or at least it for me, my situation with my sister is, you know, we never really grew into each other. And um, I kind of, you know, I, I wish we were a little bit closer. That would be cool. But also like sometimes your family aren't going to be like your best friends. They're not right. going to be the people that you spend the most time with and you would think that like that wouldn't be the case because you were especially like me and my sister were raised by the same uh mm -hmm. parents we have the same biological parents we you know come from the same culture obviously lived in the same house you'd think we have a lot in common but um it just uh i don't want to say it just didn't work out but you know you go in opposite directions and some of us end up in florida shooting ar-15s and others end up, you know, living in San Francisco and in, in feces and injectable filled streets. And that's, w and she, not only is she like, oh, it happened. She like, she like loves that. Like she like, <laughs> she's like, oh yeah, there's like homeless people shitting everywhere. She's like, it's a fucking vibe. No, she doesn't say that. But oh um, it is just interesting to see the dynamic of siblings and how they work out and like Bubba and his sister and that, you know how they were as kids and how they are as now adults and how they get on with each other. But yeah, it does. I kind of do wish I had more of a relationship, but I really don't know anything else. You know, me and my sister have had a strained, strained relationship basically since birth. I feel like, do you think uh, a relationship with like the Diakos have is kind of weird to you? Yeah. I think that's not, I don't want to say weird. I would say it's, it's, um, our situations might be more common than theirs. Yes. Oh, there's no question. Like theirs is more unique in a good yeah. way. I, and I agree. But I think that most family, and maybe it's also kind of like an Italian thing as well. I but, think so. You know, we're Cult like family is, yeah, is really important. And not to say that family isn't important for us, but in terms of like the family unit mm -hmm. and everything kind of has to be running smoothly for the most part at all times because you're yeah. in business together and you live together yeah. and your wives know each other. Whereas with most American families, and I don't necessarily think that this is a good thing, it's just kind of what is, is that, you know, someone lives in Maine and someone lives in Texas and mm -hmm. someone lives in California. And so you see each other maybe once a year, if that, which is kind of like how, you know, my situation is, especially when the parents get divorced, especially that the Diaco parents got divorced mm -hmm. and then managed to keep it together and the brothers are all so close. And right. that's impressive. But most families, I would say, are not like that mm -mm. um but uh yes me and my sister i think from birth i remember i was told by my mother that i was not happy upon her arrival <laughs> yes i was not happy upon her arrival and apparently three days after my sister was born my mom said that i came up to her with a proposition i said listen um it's been great but i think it's time to take you know my sister back to the hospital where she came from because I'm, yeah. I'm over it <laughs> and i um my mom says we actually she's actually staying and then at that point she said i threw um quite a large tantrum i wasn't happy and she's like but i got you the new bedspread it was like a perp light lavender with unicorns and i basically said the four-year-old equivalent about i don't give a fuck about no goddamn bedspread take that bitch back you know i gotcha um wasn't happy about about it at all um <clears throat> didn't really like that i had to share but you know i'm grateful for my sister's purpose in my life you know for a lot of reasons but also i think it made me you know a bit more understanding in in terms of sharing because mm -hmm. that is a concept if you if you don't grow up with it like you get it but you yep. don't get it yep. that makes sense yep did you ever have any friends that were only children and they were just kind of like oh, i was gonna say when we were talking about earlier like the only thing worse than the than the only child is the only child or maybe two that are homeschooled right. as well Right. oh you can't do that to kids i mean uh, you can I, I mean, I look, you, you really, like, if you have only one child, you really got to, like, socialize them a lot. Yeah. Otherwise, like, I don't know. I, I, I'm of the opinion you probably should have two. I mean, there's many reasons why you shouldn't as well. That, that's fine. Um, but if you have one, like, you got to really socialize them a lot. 
Yeah, and you kind of have to like force them to share with their friends. No or, question. Yeah, you can't because sharing is such an important concept that you take. And it seems like, well, that's silly because you don't really think of sharing as an adult, but you do have to, you have to make, we call it compromises. Yeah, concessions. Right, concessions, compromises. It becomes Absolutely. more official term, but as a child, the same concept is sharing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't have all the cookies. Well, that's a bad example, but like you can't, whatever. <laughs> Uh, yeah. You have to share the toy. There's only one toy. You have to share. We're not buying yeah. another toy. So instead the of getting the... Ch- yeah, the video game. Yeah, you can't play it 100% of the time. You have mm-hmm. to scale back to 50. And then maybe you make trades and like, okay, yep. you play with the ball while I play with the whatever. I The mm-hmm. pogs or whatever the fuck ever, you know. So I think that that is an important concept that is lost on a lot of only children. So if you have a, a a child and just one, just try to make him or her or they be yeah. not a fucking asshole. You yeah. know, and it, and it's not even like, I wouldn't even say that, it, like my friend who's an only child, she's not like mean about it. It's more of just a blindness. Right. Like she doesn't even realize that, you know, maybe some things are inconsiderate. Like it wouldn't even occur to her. Yeah. And that's not her fault directly. It's her parents' fault. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So... Um, it's just interesting. We, um, 4th of July plans I kind of want to talk about. Okay. Kind of just doing some housekeeping on the air, I guess. Okay. So, pulling the curtain back, we, you know, not we, I'll give all the credit to you. You've been looking at flights to go places. Not for that weekend, but yes. But, okay, not for that weekend, but, <laughs> Yes, um, I have. I look at, yes. It seems like fi- flights are getting more and more expensive, and the more expensive mm-hmm. they get, the more likely they are to be canceled, it seems. Oh, yeah, they're canceling flights like crazy. Yeah, left and right. So this 4th of July, we have five days off, and it's like, dude, we got to do something. I agree. We got to do something. Um, I'm more than happy to, like, have a little bit of a staycation, but I would also like to go to a place at least for, like, a day or yeah. something. Um, but on my way to uh, Sarasota yesterday, um, I realized that my my father has a cousin that lives there. Now, he's in his 80s, but he's not, like, your typical 80-year-old. He still, like, mm-hmm. runs 10 miles a day and does fucking pull-ups and shit. He's in better shape than all of us combined. He's amazing. Um, but I also kind of want to get the tea on that situation because he was with a woman for, like, 15 years. Mm-hmm. And you have to understand, this man is in his 80s, and he, for an 83-year-old, he is a, f- he's a fucking 10. Okay. Like, I remember I went to, I went out there for, um, like, breakfast or brunch, like, a year ago, and he forgot something in the car. And he's like, I'll be right back and ran to the car as like an 83 year old. He Mm -hmm. fucking ran to the car. Mm. People that are 25, 30 years younger than him are like having trouble walking, walking into the restaurant. It's in Sarasota. so Everyone's fucking old. But, you know, people walking in with canes in their 60s. This motherfucker is going for a jog at 83. He's incredible. He, you know, he had a career and he retired and then he decided he wanted to become a personal trainer. So, like, he part time personal train it's fucking amazing what he's able yeah, that's awesome capable of doing it it really is to me like uh look cool looking into the future and being like that could be me you know having such a high quality of life at such an advanced age is mm-hmm. awesome so he was with this woman they were never married but you know they they i think they met in new york or new jersey and then they moved to florida i think in 2012 around then and he was with this woman and she so he, was he was older when they met to begin yes with. Okay. i think it was like his third marriage gotcha okay um so he never married her but whatever they were you know pretty much married lived a married life and bought a pro- a, 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 a condo together in sarasota mm. did all that stuff and then what happened is i think she like had an injury with her hip and that threw off the course of her life she then gained a bunch of weight because she couldn't really move and then moving became harder because she was heavier mm-hmm. and then she had more complications from being heavier with like blood yep. sugar, diabetes, shit like that. Snowball. and so Right. And so all these issues are com- compounding. And it was a very interesting situation because it's like, what do you do? He's just trying to help her mm-hmm. and she doesn't want to be helped. So you stay together. He's trying to encourage her. Let's eat better. Let's do this. Let's work out. She refuses. Mm-hmm. So I think that probably persisted for like five or six years. And finally, I learned from my dad that he's like, I can't do this anymore. He's like, this is literally the end of my life. Yeah, yeah. Am I just going to live the end of my life just trying to 
you know, get this person to enjoy theirs. Like, this is just so hard because he's such an upbeat, you know, kind of like super spry, fun loving guy. And then he was married to this woman who was just like, she was kind of, she was like funny. And when I first met her, she was like funny and cynical, but then she just lost the funny and became just like bitter. That sucks. Yeah. And so, um, I think he left her, you know, and it's, it's, it seems sad because it's like, you know, first of all, they weren't married, but you know, they had this, they created this life together. So did you talk to him? Not yet. I'm planning on doing that this weekend or early next week. Um, giving him a call and apparently he's already met somebody else. Oh. At the gym. And this woman is 47. Whoa. Okay, Jody Yako, what's Hell up? Yeah. So I need to call him to get the tea on, you know, that situation. Because he's dating someone like almost half his age. That's fucking awesome. Which is fucking crazy. So good for him. I'm excited. I don't even know if he lives in the same spot. Where my hair appointment was yesterday was probably five minutes from where he used to live. So obviously I was like thinking about like, fuck, should I say hi? Like, mm-hmm. what's up? So um, maybe we can go to Sarasota. I love Sarasota. I, I I know it's probably a little too early to start thinking about retirement, but I, I think I would retire <laughs> there. I'm not kidding. I love it there. No, no. You're you just talking about thinking about retiring. Yeah. I'm like, fuck, if it's the perfect place. Because think about it. When you're young, you want to be in a vivacious, exciting, kind of like hot, trendy environment where there's lots of things to do for your age group, right? Mm-hmm. So if I'm like a young person, like being in, going to UC Santa Barbara was perfect. It was awesome. You know, and then you kind of maybe grow up a little bit and you decide you want to live in the suburbs, have a family. And then when you're old as fuck and you can barely move, you want to go to Sarasota because you go, they got a lot of stuff for people who are immobile and senile there. They got their Bringley Museum? Exactly. Which is fucking awesome. <laughs> I love it. So um, that's my plan. I've already been thinking about retirement, so that's cool. That's that's nice. But yeah, so July 4th plans, we're still working mm-hmm. on it. This weekend, we're, uh, or I, I should speak for myself, planning to go to Pride. That, that you should have fun there. The only issue I have with Pride is that it, there may be uh, rain. Yeah. And I mean, I love the gays, but not that much. I'm not going. Right. I'm not going if it's raining. That's my only thing. Yeah. I don't want to fuck up my hair. Oh, yeah, you'll melt. So, yeah, that's the plan for this weekend. Okay, so um, assuming you're, I mean, the plan is to hang out with one of your friends beforehand. Yes, there's a little bit of a pre-gaming party. And then go down to the parade area. Yes, which I've never been in. I would love to see the the gay parade. I've never even been to a pride parade. And I'm, I, and I I'm very pro pride. I'm very, you know, pro gay. I want to see, and I'm an adult, you know, so if there's some dicks and balls hanging out, I don't care. You know, don't bring your kids to Pride. Yeah. I mean, again, I don't know what kind of, what St. Pete Pride's all about, but um, I probably wouldn't bring a child to Pride. I think that that's a bad idea. I went with Lummy to Ebor Pride. That might be a little different, but okay. And it was, um, it was daytime. That wasn't a nighttime deal. It was daytime, which does make a difference. Yes. Um, And it was, I mean, there was a lot of like kids there that shouldn't have been there. No. And people think that they're like, oh, I'm silly progressive. And like, I'm, I'm introducing my, my child into, you know, to make sure that they're open minded and to the gay community. If the gay community is, you know, seeing a guy with a strap on getting fucked with another guy with a strap on, like, that's not, that's not how you should be introducing, um, being gay in the LGBTQ community to the children. That's not, this is how you start. You go, sometimes little Johnny. Uh, boys love other boys. That's where that's where you start. Mm-hmm. And girls love girls. And sometimes boys love girls, and girls love boys. And that's fine. And you go okay, but yep. you don't need to see someone getting finger fucked at a parade. Yeah, it's weird. It's it's such a weird thing. It's like, very how, sexualized. It is. That's that's so weird. But it it's also not weird because that's literally the only difference is the sexual orientation. Right. Or I gender. I gender. You know what? I'm just whatever. There's you a lot know, of letters. I, I got, There's I lots you. of letters. I, got you. I don't know. Anyways, so, I hope, so, no. so assuming that it's uh, the weather is good, then we're going to go and all that. That'll be fun. Yes. Um, it if, doesn't if look it, like it's going to be good. No, I know. No. If it starts raining, what's the plan then? Leave. Hang, out, leave. hang out with your friend leave. and then go home? Um, stay where there is shelter. And when there's not an option for shelter, then we leave. Okay. Does that sound good? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my tolerance for being uncomfortable is very low, as you've probably noticed. Yeah, I've, I've, I've seen it a <laughs> time or two. It's cold. I want to leave. It's hot. I want to leave. Uh, no, just... you go from yay. 
Hey, let's go. Yep, I'm hungry. I got a shit. Whatever the case, I'm not. Uh, mm, 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 nope. If if there's a chance for that, I could be more comfortable. I'm moving to that state of being. I want to mm. eat. I want to poop. I want to move. I want air conditioning. I want whatever. Just get me the fuck out of here. Well, I'm gonna go down there and uh, if it's assuming it's nice out and maybe we'll get some content. Yes, that's the plan. I want to get some. Some content, see the parade, see the I'll people. Give it, I'll give it to Rhett and let him edit it and uh, blur everything out. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> there'll be a lot of blurring. It's going to be a needed. rainbow for five minutes. Yeah. Because you're not because there's going to be so much nudity. But it would be it should be fun. Hopefully we'll um we'll get some good content for that. Oh, stand by. Stand by again. There we go. All right. Well, that is pretty much all that we have for right now. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Yes. Yelling at your friends over Roe v. Wade. It's a great way to, you know, they really could have done this any other day and time, but they have to do it like Friday afternoon. Of course. That's not the move. Scotus, which reminds me of a scrotum, but whatever. They could have done this. The perfect time to do this is on a fucking Monday when people are already annoyed. Because nah. then it's like whatever, yeah. Because then you got, you got you got you know you got a week to kind of let it cool off. You're already pissed off because it's Monday, so you're just compounding on a bad day already. But you're looking to go into the the weekend Friday Pride, and it's like, oh, by the way, no more abortions. Now we're mad. It's like, oh, I'm killing my vibe, man. Yeah. I don't like people getting upset and yelling, and I'm sure we're gonna see some of that tomorrow. But anyways, people I hope that, that probably yeah. won't have you know the chance of them having kids are probably pretty low. Or getting pregnant. Doesn't he, does it even matter anymore? Is that even okay to say that you can't have children if that two guys can't procreate? That's racist. <laughs> it's very racist. You know what? It's fucking racist and it's xenophobic. That's, that's like that one that meme of the kid. That's racist. Yeah. It's xenophobic and it's racist and I'll have no part of it. Thank you. But have a great weekend, everybody. Blitz, thank you for everything that you do. Thank you. Appreciate you very much. And to the Bubba Army, we'll see you on Monday. Goodbye. Bye.